This video is going to be all about providing deliverables in Logic Pro. So if you're working on any projects where you need to deliver 5, 10, 20, 30 files from a Logic session, then this video is going to change the game for you. This video is going to show you the fastest way possible to provide deliverables for your Logic Pro projects. What I mean by deliverables are any number of files that you have to provide along with your Logic session. So if you're, for example, I do sync licensing, production music, and so when I finish a song, I have to provide anywhere from 20 to 30 different versions of that song all prepped in, in specific ways, or if you're a mastering engineer and work on anywhere from you know four to 10 projects a day, this method basically supercharges and automates anything you're doing within Logic Pro. The most important part of this workflow is a program or application or plugin, whatever you want to call it, called Bounce Butler. This was created by Chris Graham, a mastering engineer and podcaster, and I've listened to a bunch of his podcasts and have learned a lot. He released this probably years ago, and I heard it on the podcast, and I was like, that's cool, but it takes me two days to mix a song and then I just bounce it once. So kind of back of mind thing, didn't think anything of it. Fast forward to today, I'm doing music licensing for production music libraries and I need to deliver an, an insane amount of files per album, probably two to 300 files, audio files per album. And the first album I did this with, I did not have Bounce Butler. I did not have this method. And it took me, I kid you not, like a week or two to prep and deliver all those files because it's something like, okay, like drums and bass version only. So I solo that up, I bounce it and I scroll on Instagram until it's done. And then, okay, the next one and then scroll. And then we need a 60 second version and scroll. And it took so much time. And I was like, there's got to be a better way. And then my subconscious when I was doing the dishes one day said like try bounce butler I know it wasn't necessarily created for that it was created in mind for mastering but I decided to try it anyway and I figured out this workflow that just launched me into the stratosphere as far as productivity. So I figured out this workflow and I got it dialed in to work out all the little nuances for the way I need it. So I thought I'd share it. Number one, to spread awareness of Bounce Butler because it's an incredible program that has saved me a ton of time. And number two, especially for you sync licensing people who I've listened to your podcast as well. And it's always complaining about deliverables. Like any sync licensing composer I've talked to or listened to, they're just like, oh, it's great. I love composing, but oh, deliverables. So I want to show you this way that's helped me get, I don't even know how much time saved, but it's gotten me down to prepping probably 20 files of deliverables in under an hour which from like a day to an hour, basically. Also, I feel like I need to say this is not sponsored. Um, this is just me, a person who uses Bounce Butler, telling you, a person who maybe should consider using it, to consider using it because it's helpful. Maybe, Chris Graham, if you're watching and you want to sponsor this in the future, let me know, but I'm going to keep using it either way because that's time. You're buying back your time, basically. So this is Bounce Butler. Over here on the left, you basically have your DAW of choice. Oh, they added Ableton. So mine's always on Logic Pro X. And then you've got all your file formats here. So whenever I deliver, it needs to be a WAV file and it needs to be 24-bit and it needs to be 48K. And you can set your other things here, you know, your offline, online. Um, you can also put in names. So you can name your session, you can add a little tag on the end, you can tell it where to bounce to, and then you can also have it text you or email you when it's done. And then over here on the right, you just have a drag and drop, put sessions in there. I'll go ahead and show you my basic workflow with this, and then I'll show you a couple issues that have come up and how I've resolved them. So basically, this is my full version of the song, right? Um, it's a full version of a song. I've set the cycle range and project start and end markers to be exactly how I want the project files length to be. Um, because if you don't do that, it's going to automatically bounce all your sessions too long or too short, or you'll have the cutout. So, so that's really important to note is you need the cycle range to start exactly where you want it. So I always do one beat before my downbeat, just so it doesn't start right on the money. And then you know, here's my last hit right here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Here's my last hit right about there. So then I give it, you know, five to seven seconds to fade out. And I've also put the fade out on my stereo output here. 
um, so that way it's all done right there. And so I put the cycle range, I leave it on, and I have the project endpoints. So there's no question to bounce Butler where this needs to start and end. And then I go ahead and have like, this is my, we'll call it my root or my base level project. And I'll go ahead and hit shift command S to save as, and then I'll do underscore. And I go ahead and label it here exactly how I need to deliver it to the library. So we'll go ahead and call this one full. And then we're going to save. So now in our folder here, we have the song and we have the full, and then this is YT for YouTube, but that's my kind of original. So sometimes maybe I'd just call this OG uh, for original. That way I know I don't need to bounce that one. That's just there. That's kind of my working copy. So then another type of file I need to deliver is the narration version. So like nothing high on it, no vocals, no lead guitars, because we want it to sit under a narration or a, a vocal talking. So I'm going to go ahead and mute all my lead guitars. Keys can stay in because they're not leads, but I have this synth lead and background vocals. They can all come out. You can listen to it to confirm that that's what you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then call it NARR for narrative, narration. I don't know why I say narrative. Probably English class in high school. Another version I need to deliver is a drum and bass. So I'm going to go ahead and mute everything else that's not a drum, bass, or percussion. So now up here, I've got my drums. Um, I will keep effects in there, any sort of cymbal swells and stuff. Percussion and bass. Do that. I just call it drum bass. And so now we're moving. The other thing I use this for is to prep stems. And I've told people how I do stems and they're like, why don't you just do the, the logic command E and bounce out your stems? Well, the reason is all my stems need to hit my mastering because if for whatever reason they just want a couple, we still want that mastering sound, that mastering character, um, all the effects in the mastering to be on each individual thing. So that way, if an editor just wants to use the drum stem and the electric guitar stem, it's mastered, it's done. So on my stereo out, I have basically my mastering chain. I use CLA Mixdown and Isotope Ozone. That's why for those of you who are going to comment and say, just use command E or the export command in Logic, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So now I'm going to solo up all the elements I need for that. So I'm going to solo up the drums so nothing else is going to play. And I'll go ahead and save that. Stem, drums. I'll do one more just so we understand. So effects here, I'm going to solo up both the bus and all the effects here so that any sends anywhere get accounted for in this. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Save that. Stem, effects. And so now we're starting to get some momentum. I would continue doing this until every single version I have has a session in my folder. So if I go back to here, you'll start to see I'm, I'm getting some sessions in there. And I'm going to keep going. I'll show you the finished product here. Um, where is it? Pop Punk. This is about what I deliver here. So I've got all my alternate versions, cut downs, everything I need right there. Um, so it kind of looks ridiculous to have a folder with that many sessions. But then I can hit bounce and walk away and come back the next morning and... I have a folder full of all my audio files and deliverables ready to go. So a couple weird things that I had to work out with Bounce Butler. The first one was this cycle range and getting the project start and end points exactly right. Because if you have it a little too long or a little too short as you're prepping these sessions, the, the mistake, the issue is going to go down into all these sessions. And then when you throw them in Bounce Butler and export, it's going to do every single one wrong. So it's important to set that, set those parameters, the start and the end points and get your fade ins and fade outs. So that way it's absolutely perfect before you start prepping all those different sessions. And then I also bounced out any heavy MIDI instruments. So, I mean, this was a very guitar heavy album. So luckily I didn't have a lot of MIDI heavy stuff, but on like a cinematic album where I have lots of MIDI strings and like cinematic toms and all of that stuff, Bounce Butler doesn't have time to load those samples before it exports. 
Um, so the workaround for that is I need to go ahead and bounce that down to audio. So that's what I did here. My drums were kind of heavy and I noticed if I didn't do this, then when I check the exports from Bounce Butler, like the, the kick and maybe the first couple symbols don't come through. They're not fully loaded in the exports. So that's something to note. You need to bounce it down to audio to do this. But other than that, bouncing it down to audio and making sure your start and end points are the same, it'll work perfectly and save you a ton of time. So I'll go ahead and close this. Whenever you're ready, like you've prepped all the files you want and you're ready to load up Bounce Butler, you just drag them all in there. So I've got my drum bass, my full, my narrative, a couple stems and drop them in there. And then, you know, make sure all these are correct. And then you would go ahead and hit Bounce. Bounce Butler needs no other apps open to fully use your CPU. So unfortunately, I can't show that on this video because I'm using OBS and a bunch of stuff to record this video. But otherwise, you'd hit Let's Bounce and then you can just walk away and it's going to one at a time, open those sessions, bounce it to audio, put it back. And then the only other thing I do before I deliver is I'll actually open back up a Logic session and then I'll go grab an entire song of exports. So... Come in here, all these bounces. And then I will literally highlight all of these and go ahead and drop them in. And we'll create new tracks. And then this just allows me to quickly see everything and make sure they all start at the same time. So here's all my 15 second versions. They all start exactly at the same spot. You can see there's no noise on the files here. And then going to the ending here, they all hit the downbeat at the exact same time. They all fade out and the files end at the exact same time. This is something your library or whoever's doing your metadata or receiving the files, they might care about this. So it's important to make sure they all start, especially your stems. If, if you deliver stems that don't line up, that's low hanging fruit. So, you know, making sure the cycle range and all of that is correct within logic before you bounce, that's going to fix any weird issues. Um, so now I can confidently, you know, roll up and just deliver 30 versions. It only took me, you know, an hour or less to prepare very quick flying through all those versions. And then Bounce Butler takes care of the rest. You know, it allows me to work eight hours on music and then hang out with my wife or hang out with some friends after work while my computer literally puts in another five hours. A couple weeks ago, I finished up an album and I had about 101 versions left on this round of bouncing. And I dropped them all in Bounce Butler and at 5 p.m. I hit start and it, it went until like 10.30. Like right before I went to bed, it was just finishing up. And I mean, man, if I would have sat, that would have been a whole day, you know, prepping, waiting for exports, um, but I was able to get a whole nother song composed in that time. So I really wanted to make this video for any sync licensing composers out there because this would really help your workflow. You need to be doing this and then you will enjoy doing your deliverables instead of dreading and being like, oh man, I shouldn't have waited till the last minute to do all these deliverables. If you have any other questions about Logic, sync licensing, or Bounce Butler, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'll have a link to Bounce Butler down in the description so you can go check it out if you're interested. I'll also have a link to my one-on-one -on -one coaching down in the description. So if you'd like a personalized one-on-one -on -one class on anything Logic, music licensing, composing, mixing, anything like that, feel free to click that link and fill out the form. I really appreciate you watching this video and I hope it provided some value to you. If you'd like to continue watching some helpful content, I'll have one right here for you to check out. Thanks.